زمان يراتي كان لجيتارا. So what do I want to say? بيش في زمان في ذلك كان وشوف خزرة. Why the fall and then the return? شكان نحن بنجلي هاد كام شان نحن سوني مزيد زي. It is so that here we will find how much we hate each other. وخش في رأ. The power of the breaking. The ego of every person. And because of that, we will find why we have to go back up to a state of unification. Because the problem is that the kli, the vessel, wants to be fulfilled with something. וזה דומה, נגיד, לאנחנו עכשיו. רוצים קצת לאכול. Say that we now want to eat something. יביאו ארוחה. They'll bring a meal. כל אחד יתחיל לאכול. We'll all start eating. כמה שיותר אוכל, פחות רוצה. But the more we eat, the less we want. ופחות נהנה. And less enjoy. ויש עוד הרבה יכול להיות דברים טובים מה שכוחן, וכבר אין רצון. Perhaps we'll still have uh, tons of good food on the table, but no desire to eat it anymore. So the pleasure stops. It, it can't last. And that's how it is with everything. We want something. We, we, we um, chase it for perhaps years. But once we have it, within hours or days or perhaps weeks, it's gone. זאת אומרת, תענוג שממלא את הרצון, הוא מכבה את הרצון, מבטל אותו. So the same pleasure that fulfills the desire also quenches it. אבל איך בכל זאת לקבל תענוג, וכל פעם עוד ועוד ועוד ליהנות? So how do we receive pleasure and at the same time keeping joy? ללא הפסקה. Endlessly. כי אז ההרגשה הזאת ללא הפסקה, היא תהיה הרגשת החיים נצחית. Because this Endless sensation will be will also be the sensation of eternal life. So the ability to reach it is uh, um, attainable only through. Only if we. Uh, divide this uh, unit into two parts. There has to be someone else out there and that I enjoy because he enjoys. So it's as if the pleasure goes through me toward him. And that doesn't put me out. Because my pleasure is always there. Like a mother who enjoys her baby. She can give it, it endlessly. If you recognize yourself as part of the whole, of course. That's the That's why we have to break and reunite. Yeah, to, learn, to learn the physics of the lower level. And then to go back across the line and learn the physics of the higher level. So how do we learn both levels? If we, that is those who feel through the point in the heart, the desire for spirituality for the upper state, and we want to go back there. If we begin to study about our situation up there. And this is actually the wisdom of Kabbalah. So we learn about our situation there, in that state. Which is in fact our situation even now, but not consciously. But by wanting to come out of that uh, uh, blocked situation into the realization of the actual situation, if we learn about our correct situation, 
אותו כאילו משכים עלינו אור שנמצא שם. It's as if we draw on ourselves, on ourselves the force or the light that is up there. כי אני נמצא בעולם הזה. Because I'm already there in this world, in that state, but not consciously. But if I make an effort to become conscious of it, to awaken it, my desire opens up the additional vessels and the first And then we begin to feel respiratory. We begin to feel how we're all interconnected in one and through each and every one of us, the infinite light flows uh, endlessly and without any limitations. And all the troubles that we feel in the world today are only in order to compel humanity to start going back up. And that, that's also a higher thermodynamic free energy per unit volume state. Uh, so, God to but I'm sorry to inject that, but, but you repeat that it's a yeah. higher thermodynamic free energy per unit volume state. And the universe flows usually to lower the free energy per unit volume through process after process after process. But when consciousness comes in, rather than getting just increase of entropy, you get decrease of entropy, increase of potential, and the thermodynamic free energy goes back to storage in the whole. He just said excellent. I think that's exactly Beautiful. what's happening now. Yes, we're at that turning point. But I, 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 I tend to ask a question, which is, I have a feeling that this out-breathing and in-breathing state of the all is, is a large-scale natural process. So you're asking where's the free choice? No, it isn't a question of free cho choice. It is that, that that process, I think our free choice can make it slow or fast. But it's a process that's, re that's required by the Creator. The whole process is sealed from beginning to end. Yes. Yes. All the steps from beginning to end I, I would agree. are already there and measured. And we all have that spiritual gene containing, like in a spiral, all the future situations. And they evolve through the light. And, and, and thus we go from state to state. And we can only shorten the way by understanding that it is in our interest to rise. And the minute we want to rise and draw the light, then we already experience being in spirituality. Okay, I mean, I, I, I basically uh, agree with the general flow picture. Um, and that, so, it is a process. And, and we're not conscious enough to know why the Creator itself needs or wants such a process. I know you mentioned the desire and, and such, and that is an aspect of love. And love does seem to be the source of all creation. But perhaps, well, maybe the question is not meaningful at our state. No, he'll tell you what Kabbalah says. You know, many people think that we've done bad things to get where we are and such. But it, but, but we, it seems to be a natural process and we basically are indestructible. Only, only the... People don't do anything bad. Yeah, I agree. And so, so the issue is... is um, Indeed, as during the outbreathing stage, from the total, from being whole, 
totally whole. And becoming, going to lower and lower levels is, is an experience uh, of, of having a capacity without having had to learn it. And when you get down to the lowest level and you start to muck around in that level, you learn about that level. And then you begin to seek higher aspects. And, you, and in the process it was designed to, to have the in-breathing stage of moving back to the source. And then learning the details, the quantitative details of each step on the road back so that when all come back to the whole, it has all of this knowledge in detail Mm -hmm. And so the Creator, uh, I think, has ultimately, I have a feeling it has more than it had before it started the, pro the down process. <laughs> like, like a spiral, like an expanding spiral. <laughs> He's beginning to respect physics more than Kabbalah. <laughs> they, they go together. They go together. I mean, it, the, and, and that's our path. I mean, it is the issue of learning the details, arguing, arguing the models, finding proof for expanded models. Actually, the lowest are the same in the lowest parts and the highest part of creation. As above, so below. I mean, I, I, mean, I agree that, that it, it is the interpretation that, that is different. For example, down at this lower level, it, it, is, it is electromagnetism that really determines life. And the mathematics is what we all learn in school. It's called the Bellion mathematics. But when you cross that line, now you have a higher level of electromagnetic interactions. And the mathematics is not a Bellion. And we, most of us don't learn that in school. The thing is that in that line, you already have to invert the intention from uh, unfounded hatred to unfounded love. Well, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I feel that that's very much involved, certainly as we make these devices with consciousness in them. It is, it is love that drives the consciousness for that purpose. But, but I only raise this point because although, although as above, so below, the, the models are similar, they can, they can differ in terribly importantly in detail. Yeah. And new energies enter, new I mean, we have four, four physical forces at, at this lower level. Many, many new ones must come in as you cross that line. And so the details of their interactions become very, very important. God is in the details. This is not the place, but uh, I'd be willing to uh, explain the whole mechanism, uh, the mechanics of what happens above the barrier, the forces and irregularities. And, uh, can, can I ask uh, just a couple of small questions that are maybe detailed, just details? Um, and I'll make a reference to another uh, Jewish writer. The Ramchal talks about uh, the world having a deterministic and an indeterministic component. And also about um, some, some human beings just um, 
having no place whatsoever. Even because of how they conduct their lives and eventually being destroyed entirely. And um, I'm, I'm referencing that from his book, um, Derech Hashem. So does that, is that congruent with this, and if so, how? רמח"ל היה מלא הרבה מקובלים הגדולים ביותר שבתהליך ההיסטוריה. רמח"ל was one of the greatest Kabbalists in uh, the historic process. במיוחד, במיוחד כמורה. Especially as a teacher. גם כן סבל מזה הרבה. He also suffered a lot because of that. הוא היה מלמד קבלה ובגלל זה סבל. זרקו אותו מעיר. עשו עליו חרם. וברח מאיטליה, איפה שהוא היה גר. הולנד, גרמניה, אני מכיר אותו טוב מאוד, ולמדתי גם כן, וחוץ מדרך השם, דרך השם, דרך השם, זה דרך של עשרה ספירות, שכל הסולם הרוחני מתחלק לעשרה חלקים. Um, the entire spiritual ladder is divided into ten parts. Uh, Even the lowest and the first part of this ladder is already above the barrier. The, the, the very first part. It's when a person is in an embryonic state. מה זה אמבריוניק? כמו שהעובר בתוך האימא הוא מבוטל לגמרי מתפקוד עצמי. וכל העבודה וכל הקיום מצד האימא. האדם שעובר מעל המחסום נכנס לאותו תפקוד כלפי רוחניות. A person who crosses the machsum, the barrier, begins to be in the same functioning. He completely annuls his ego. And he's just willing to, to uh, be subject to everything, whatever the upper forces do. He just goes into the upper light like an embryo. That's the very first degree that Ramchal talks about. And the rest are higher. That's when he begins So after having annulled oneself completely, one begins to uh, grow, to nurture one's intention to give. לפני זה, בזמן שהוא בר, הוא צריך להיות תשע uh, מדרגות שנקראות תשע ערכי מידה. While being in an embryonic state, one has to go through nine degrees uh, of that state, called nine months of, of conception. שבהם הוא כל הזמן מבטל האגו שלו, רצון לקבל שלו, שכל הזמן עולה. In which one continuously annuls one's ego. which in turn is con constantly grows. So it is an ordinary person who comes to a state of being willing to completely revoke his own ego with respect to this world. Everything, everything here in this world. That's the condition for crossing the machsam. He 
he goes through this membrane into a, an, an anti-world. And then he gets additional desires all the time. While being here in this world, he had desires just like we mentioned before, money, honor, knowledge. And now he constantly acquires greater and greater desires. Desires to take pleasure in the Creator. It, the Creator manifests. Uh, in our world, the Creator is concerned. But here, He begins to appear. And one has to keep oneself from swallowing the Creator, from devouring in other words, not receive from the Creator, but continuously give back to Him. And this is how one grows through the nine spirit. Up to the ninth. And then there is a state of birth. These degrees are the preliminary degrees. Uh, just like we don't count one's life before he's born. But only after he's born. So what happens The Creator appears entirely, completely. And the person puts something called a masach, a scream, over him. Not wanting to take any pleasure from him. Then begins the next phase. In one spiritual evolution. When one begins to, to uh, nurture and increase the desire to give. So here too there are degrees, but where do they come from? It's the, it's the Creator giving him a greater and greater desire. How? By appearing more and more. And then a person doesn't just reject the Creator, but wants to give back to Him. This is like stage two of only wanting to give without actually having anything to give. That, that state is called katnut, infancy. Like a child. After he completes it, he's, it's as though he is finished with his childhood. So now he wants to give everything to the Creator, but he has nothing to give. That's a, a state of smallness or infancy in, in spirituality. That level is called the revival of the dead. Now one begins to work uh, by way of receiving in order to give. A certain pleasure comes to me, I measure how much of it I can receive, and that I receive. <coughs> but why is it called re revival of the dead? Because in the past I did not want to work with my will to receive. 
And related to it is if it is something dead, uh, um, unfit for living, for spiritual living. And now I revive it. That's why it's called revival of the dead. I begin to reuse them. And now I use I use all of it again, all my desires, the, the, the most egoistic desires, but now it's with the intention to give to the Creator. All these situations are generally called uh, five worlds. Times five uh, inner states called Partsufim. Times five Sfirot, which are the parts in each individual Partsufim. All in all, we have five to the power of three to 125 degrees. And that's what one has to go through. One you might put it differently. Our, our clay, our vessel, is corrected through uh, 125 um, layers. Meaning I correct my clay more and more and more. I, I correct all of it every time, but on, on varying um, levels of, of depth. Depending, depending on the light that shines in, into the vessel and how much I see into my own ego. And that's how one advances. That, that's the only way that I can talk about Ramchal, not uh, how uh, people study him regardless of Kabbalah. <coughs> if you want, uh, to be delighted to, to delve deeper into that. Would it be useful at all, since you've brought us all together here from different walks of life, but, uh, different but, uh, ways of thinking, but, uh, to try to relate what we understand, we understand from Kabbalah with our particular interest uh, of quantum uh, physics or medicine or uh, Bill Tiller's remarkable work or I, mean, I think Bill, Bill has been, been commenting on your work and relating it to his own work, Bill which I think is a good thing to do. I think yes. it opens up some doors. And I don't know if you would like those doors open any further, or which would require maybe each of us saying more, and you want to wait for the evening to do that. I, I just want to know what you want to do with this. Now, I appreciate what you've given me. Right. And we saw in, in, in the future that all of you guys are concerned with the state of being of regardless of your different professions. Uh, he's the same. He, he joins you in that. If, if we can do something together, he'll be delighted that he dedicates his life Everything he has, every means, everything we have. 
אני מסביר לכם מה שאני יודע בקבלה, ואולי אנחנו נדבר על זה הלאה. Clearly you know your stuff, there's no question, and I would learn, I would learn, I'd love to sit at your feet for a long time. I do it. It would be used, very useful, it would help me tremendously, and I have no question about it. But now my concern here is the rest of the world. <laughs> That's the main question we have, what we're hoping so, yeah. that you can really so, help us in what was through education? Yes, through. that's right. That's How right. do we get there? Well, that's okay. what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, uh, Rav has asked me to say a few words about Mike. Uh, Mike is a perfect example of uh, what happens to a person after a few years of uh, 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 studying Kabbalah, uh, he is one of Rav's uh, more better students. There are many uh, other uh, students, but he's, he's just a perfect example of uh, how a person uh, advances and through studying Kabbalah. No? Now what do you want to say? You're exactly right. Yeah, okay. We are in a situation here we realize how critical it is. You see, you, even though you're exactly correct that you cannot change what's going to happen, you can change how much pain you're going to have to go through before you get there. That is what, basically by changing the velocity. How? It, it only happens through awareness. That's what changes the, the velocity. The more that are aware, the ward increases, yes. leaving the pains behind instead. What we want is to facilitate that. That's all. That's um, it. Uh, is it the best education and work? Academic. Is that it? Is it through, should we approach through, you know, we, we have two hundred million, you know. Yeah, let, let's be careful. The issue, I mean, a academia, if one could really, we had this argument before, I think I think the establishment science community is stuck, terribly stuck in space time, yes. and it's going to take something very special to get them unstuck. So, an academia uh, can really not afford to do a lot of things that have been anathema to academics for a long time, such as this area of psychoanalytics, and I suspect Kabbalah in its true sense. Uh, and, and so the answer is there. And the same thing with respect to the funding. Wow. That's, that's given by the government in this country largely. Um, and they can't afford to um, give money to this kind of work because the people they serve, to them it's anathema, and they're in the universities, and them it's, to them it's anathema relative to their funders, and so the government won't do it. And so it seems only the general populace and the few philanthropists around can fund such work to move forward. Yes. What, I was gonna, what, I, what I was going to suggest is, is something like this. I don't know if this is useful or not. You all have to tell me. Part of the thing that I have been doing is integrating ideas from Kabbalah with quantum physics. And I've actually written about these. <clears throat> and I see certain metaphorical tie-ins, which, compared to what you do, is very simplistic. Maybe it would be useful, maybe not. I, I don't want to bore you or anybody else, but I, I'm willing to share some of this idea if you think it would be useful. It actually fits in nicely with Bill's own work, as I heard him talk, and I think it fits in very well with your work, and it's a little simpler, and maybe people can get it, I don't know. It relates to quantum physics as well. He'll be honored to, to uh, do any kind of work together with you, with all of you. First of all, it's, it's, well, it's a great honor for him. 
במעמד שלהם יכול לעזור להתקדמות של הפצת החומת הקבלה וסך הכל להקל על כל העולם. Uh, can also uh, tremendously help the circulation of Kabbalah and thus help the world. So uh, he is open to any kind of suggestion. Is it can be various kinds of uh, films, features, or books. If, if you find this doesn't agree, I want to hear your, your wise viewpoint here, but let me, let me begin. We begin with Aleph, the rabbi lied. We begin with Aleph, the rabbi lied. Yeah. Lied, right? He understands. No. Then there is something called mem. Okay. Okay. And then there's something called sheen. I don't know how to draw my sheens anymore. It's actually this, I think. Okay. And then there's sheen. I think sheen is Right. On the left and seen. It's actually the opposite. Yeah, the other way. Okay, yeah. on the left and then on the <laughs> right. Right? Is that it? Uh, on the left is a scene and on the right. This is seen. Yeah, right. And this is she. Yeah, if you erase the dot on the left. All right, forget the dots. I get my dots mixed up. <laughs> I get my dots all wrong. Okay. Now, here is. This is. This is, this is this is spirit, if you will. This is water, or water, or consciousness, with this unconscious. And this is sheen. This is uh, the breath of God. This is what is called uh, ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim, and this is also ruach Elohim, but this is different from this. Uh, and this big difference is what's important. It's a significant okay. difference. Very big difference. Very big difference. Now this is this is what I've understood from, from very simple Kabbalah. This is the build out breath in breath. It is also very reminiscent to what we do in quantum physics. We talk about the probability of something being related to a wave function times its complex conjugate wave function. Psi star is in a way like this, and psi is like this. So they differ only in phase angle? No, the psi star is a time reversal of psi, or a space and time reversal of psi. But it's a phase. It is a phase reversal, certainly. Right. But it's a in reciprocal sense. Yeah, in reciprocal sense. And uh, in quantum mechanics, we can't do quantum mechanics. We can't do it without both. This is unobserved by itself. Can't see it, like the breath of God, the sheen, the the sigh, the the movement. We don't see it. We don't see this either. But together, we get the possibilities of tangible realities coming into being. They're becoming material almost. We exist and feel only through the conjunction. Aha. There must be the complete cycle. Yeah. So this is quantum mechanics. Yeah. Really? 
and what all the rest is commentary on how to work with all of this. But this is the basis of it. What it means, decide what it means. It could mean potential for all kinds of different realities. But until there's this, there's nothing. Now, it looks to me like this is where Kabbalah and quantum mechanics have, a, have something simple but coming together. Okay. So, what is this? What is this? Malchut and Keter. What is this? Malchut. 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 This is Keter. Cancer. Cancer. Is that oh, okay. That's the state of the creature. Is it source and sink? Yeah, right. And in Kabbalah, we learn that this is spirit. We also learn that this is resistance. Resistance. Good. And like Tav is the final resistance, 400. This is, this is 40. All the fours are resistance. Dalit, Men, Tav. Resistance. That which... And Tav, the final resistance, the last letter, is a mystery like Aleph. Aleph is Aleph Vosher Olam, the champion of the world. It's the letter of the creator. It's the silent letter of which no no one could say. So Aleph is in everything, but it's in nothing because you can't pronounce it. All words are Aleph. Yes, because the world was created in the second letter. And in quantum mechanics, the source of this wave, no source, it just is. In electromagnetic theories, as Bill has talked about, there is always a source, there is a charge, and that produces electromagnetic waves. Move in and so there's a source. But for the wave function, the quantum wave, the quantum, no source. Or it's the source is Aleph, which has which is like so P is a It depends on the P. P is probability. Uh, which the said it's, it's the observer. What? This is where the observer comes in. Yes, okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Without the observer, this doesn't happen. See, people have tried to explain this, and there are many interpretations of quantum quantum physics, and there are like 25 of them now. Uh, add our own, uh, uh, our explanations on any level of depth that you want. Yes. And you can also explain these things in terms of things on the level of still or vegetative or animate? Or Absolutely. Or Absolutely, because the ultimate goal is, is, is of course the same. It's, is, is we think quantum mechanics and, and maybe a super quantum mechanics Bill is, is so you know, working on. We believe that quantum mechanics is, is a necessary first step. It's our baby step into, into the spiritual world. So, mm -hmm. so I think this to me, this is the simplest way. There are, of course, many, many things that could be added to this. It's not the final, but this is the groundwork. That's all I wanted to say. No problem. He can go on from there. That's all. With the uh, public lecture coming up tonight, and some of these things possibly being discussed, and uh, and I hope that there are people in the audience who are sufficiently educated about uh, physical th modern physical theory, um, and without wanting to take the role of uh, Richard or of um, uh, what's his first name, Albert, David Albert, David Albert. Sorry, it was an objector. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to object, well, because there isn't an object here. Do you still want to raise that issue today? It needs to be said. It needs to be Sorry. said. No, 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 no. Don't be so egocentric. A lot of these things are, are just analogies. Yes. And I think it's very important 
Certainly, anybody with a, with a background in, in, in physics. And, um, and approaching it maybe with an open mind, you know, not like David Albert did, but with, a, with legitimate scientific skepticism, is going to notice that there's a huge difference between a kind of, uh, you know, structural similarity and a, and a real connection between quantum theory, certainly taken as a whole, or even certain elements of it, some aspects of which I'm convinced there is a connection, but, but I'll, play the, I'll play the 100% skeptic. Uh, that e e even element by element, to make a convincing case, it, it really needs to be demonstrated. And, and even Bill Tiller's work, which is about which I think many people will be skeptical, appropriately skeptical, until confirmation is in and it's been replicated by two men and so on and so forth. Even, even his work actually stands outside of quantum theory and is not part of quantum theory. And so a lay audience is, is very apt to come away thinking that a connection or a point of contact has been made between this most profound of Jewish wisdom and the most profound physical theory that mankind has ever created. And, and I think that that just overstates the case. If, if people come away with that impression, it's very easy for that impression to be made in the way that comments have been made so far. Quantum is very popular. So what do you recommend? Well, there was a point to my bring. there was a dual point to my bringing up before the Ramchal's comment about determinism and indeterminism in the world. Because that's a that's a relatively narrow formulation. It doesn't get into specific mathematical constructs. It's a formulation which is directly at odds with uh, the Cartesian worldview. Can you like narrow it down to, to like one sentence and what exactly it is that you want? Of, of I'm just using uh, that as a... Because perhaps there's a problem that he's not getting with what you want to say about uh, the problem. What is he, what exactly in is other words, point? In other words, the point that I'm trying to make is that if we... I know that it, uh, certainly I, in speaking to a public audience, about so, uh, relation, uh, connections between so quantum mechanics, and Kabbalah, or any form of, of spirituality, we try to be very careful and circumspect, especially to a lay audience. Uh, he, well, actually, he has no regard for the audience. He was not even in favor of, of having this panel, a public panel, to begin with. Uh, for him, it, it's of no consequence, no importance. If, if we can write a, a good article with Fred, for example, and show the parallels between one and the other, not that it's the same, but the, the, par the parallel parts of it or the similarities, that in itself already promotes something. We don't even have to, we don't have to say that it's the same. The important thing is that there is a, a similar uh, uh, per perspective. But there is a barrier. I mean, I, I, I hear what Jeffrey is saying. The barrier is this thing that I feel. Psychoenergetic processes are indigenous to Kabbalah. They're not indigenous to present formalism of quantum mechanics. Absolutely not. Well, I mean, the second part of what you said, I certainly agree with. The first part is well, when a you deal, when you deal with Well, but when you deal with humans, you're talking about psychoenergetic processes. Well, I mean, as to whether that has to do with Kabbalah or not. Is, oh, oh, well, okay, that's a separate issue. I just presume that anything 
like what the bleep movie, basically that's dealing with humans. And, and so Kabbalah deals with humans. And, and present quantum mechanics is limited. It cannot handle that, but it in the future could. You know, if we do our work right. We could, we could take this particular point onto a different playing field, which might make it easier to deal with. One of the things we talked about after Santa Monica is there is a great potential to manipulate lay audiences by people that are very expert in a variety of different fields, whether it's quantum mechanics or spirituality or, or anything there. And, and, there. and each person has to look and see where that line is between wanting to communicate this knowledge you've discovered to an audience, but not using your expertise and your experience and your innovativeness to manipulate them into believing something because you want them to believe it. So, so separate from whether or not Kabbalah needs to be concerned with this audience, I think the four of you could have an ethical concern for this audience that, that the messages you give tonight or the communication or the participation or however you describe this panel isn't something that manipulates people that are easy to manipulate. Uh, Let me say something about this because yeah, I, I agree with you and, and I'm, I'm with you. I, I, we're all academic yeah. trained. We've all been trained to be... Yeah. Uh, we want integrity. To, to, yeah. to promote integrity. We want to be as much as possible. But here's my but, here's my, my concern. People are being manipulated all the time. In fact, there's nothing but media manipulation going on in every single thing. There's no such thing as the news. There's not even scientific reporting that's accurate right now because everybody's got their little money. Medical journals are being manipulated. Everybody's being manipulated. Reports are being manipulated. The, if I'm to manipulate at all, it's going to be unconscious on my part. I certainly am not going to do it consciously because I cannot see myself as a conscious manipulator trying to mold thinking to believe something which I know in my heart of heart is not true. But I can't help but be what I am as a speaker and things are going to come out and it may it may rub you the wrong way. I, you can say something. Uh, this may be... Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe that's an important thing and to do. And it's very important Cer that, that you get up and say what you have to say. There's nothing... Well, I said I would, but I'm also raising it as, a, as an actual point to be discussed right here. Right. That's why I said well, it here as opposed to just saying it. But, but I'm saying so it's even right here. here. And it's, it's a valid point intellectually. No, it is. Valid. It is. It is. Yeah. Definitely, I agree with you. But the point is we, we can't... I don't think... We shouldn't worry about it. And here's why I say we shouldn't worry about it. No, the point is, we can't help it anyway. We can't, we can't help it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Whether we unconsciously think we are or not, I mean, if you tell people that it's not this way, because you, in your heart of hearts, feel it's not the way, or if Bill gets up and says, there's another spectrum beyond the physical, and he says that it is coming from his experience, whatever. Uh, well, Another guy sitting on Insta, who is an electromagnetic engineer, what, doesn't know anything about that other spectrum that Bill's talking about. And it's going to say, oh, it's all hogwash anyway. As so you see, a, the point is, a, there's a, going a, to be, whatever a scientist says anything at all, there's going to be this kind of thing going on. And it, it's okay to have somebody say, well, wait a minute, there's another way of looking at this, it's not quite that way. I think that's healthy. I think that's very, very good. But I don't think we should try to be so careful that everything we say is got to be, you know, go through, I guess, the auspices of the Nash, of the American Physical Society's Board of Critiques. Well, there were, except there isn't any representative of the American Physical Society here. That's right. But it doesn't matter. Thing to it. You I are. Applaud and it that's very far were. away. Yeah. I know, so, I know. Because you, you, you yourself are a bit But, it's, but it's really good <laughs> to, it's to do that and to lay it out. Just as, just as I right. wish, I will make the statement tonight I, I that think, uh, present formulation of quantum mechanics is totally incapable of dealing with Kabbalah at this present point. But not if we move forward and expand. That'll be your point of view. You can say that. And I'm not going to say that. I'll say something different. You're going to say something different. I, don't think I, no, I, was, I was responding to the fact that, that you said literally 
I didn't say literally. This is no, I'm referring to the yes to that to that I'm diagram. An analogy. This, no, I, no, I didn't say yes. that. Then you said. Then you said it's an analogy. Then you acknowledged it's an analogy. No, I, 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 well, I, was trying, I said before I began, this is a metaphor. This is another thing yeah, you were well, listening to. Well, even before metaphor. I draw a drawing, yeah, did. say this is a metaphor and an analogy. And I generally try to do that. I don't try the, to do that. The entire top literature on the relationship between quantum mechanics and spirituality yeah. is absolutely ridden with the assumption yeah. that the mapping is one to one. By people, that, flat doodle. Flat doodle. But by yeah. people yeah. that yeah. never studied yeah. quantum mechanics, just people that use the word quantum, but not at all. But most of your audience you isn't you capable of studying quantum I understand that. that. Yeah. I do feel that. Yeah. I understand that, but that's going to happen. I mean, I don't know how we can avoid that situation. I think it's very simple. I think I think that David Albert went overboard. In, in yeah, trying to provide a corrective, uh, as was evidenced by uh, my uh, the uh, other side uh, in that setting. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, I, I more or less sympathize uh, with the intellectual position that he at least was yeah. trying yeah. 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 Uh, to uh, assert. And, and, I, and I think that those of us who do know something about the actual physics here should be clearer about just how speculative and also really bending over backwards to say that, you know, that oftentimes these are analogies and making a distinction between those circumstances where something very hard-nosed has been done. And there are certain points like that. I give this example of determinism and indeterminism. That's just a minor example. Uh, Bill's work, should it prove out, would be a huge example with the added subtlety that uh, will be lost on most people that is actually Jeffrey, not one of the tenets. Right. It's kind of hard for me to follow you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> can, can, but can I, can, I, can, can I say something relative to this, Jeffrey? I think it's really important what you're saying because for all of this to move forward, we must find a way to activate the establishment who are very, very bright. And, 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 the, and the issue is that they're stuck in a particular view, and if we can, if we, well, I might probably, I guess I've just run into most of their stuff. The traditionalists the tra are. Yeah, traditionalists, yeah. But, but, but the issue is, in order to get these honorable people to work in this area, one has to give honor to the truth of it and make it very clear to the public that in fact there has been a lot of pop sayings about this connection between quantum mechanics and things having to do with humans. Uh, whichever words, it's overblown and, and it's better to be cautionary. We do want the field to move forward, but we have to do it carefully and with integrity so we can be positive and at the same time pointing out where we are and and the mistakes that have been made in the past, and let's let's not try to blow it out of proportion at this point. I mean, that's, right. that's I, I would say that's a role that you could present very well. Well, I, I certainly will, but I don't see any reason that, if, for example, if you can say what you just said, yeah. you can say that too. No, no, I've already got mine set. So, so, so I mean, I've decided sort of what I could say and because what that's I can't core of scientific say. integrity. Yes, exactly. I mean, what exactly. you just said. And so if, I, and and if I have time to say the third say. thing, I would say tonight. It would be, this is my speculative view. Right. Okay. But, but I will phrase it that way. I mean, the first is some experimental data to which, right. which we have every right to which, present. Which has been reproduced right. elsewhere. And then how we have to look at it because quantum mechanics presently phrased is incapable of looking at it because it's outside the purview. And, and again, that, that's just a working, working model. Right. Working, right. working progress model. You're, you're that's just to where we are. The yeah. and, and as I say, if, if there's time in the 15 minutes, I will discuss what I think is the whole person as distinct from what the five physical senses show us. As the, whole person, as, the, as the person. Well, why don't you guys, as a panel, make a decision? There's part of this tonight, which is like a Q&A, open discussion. Why don't you have this issue be one of the topics yeah, if for that interactive I'm sure it will be. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's an important issue to bring up. You know, deal with the stuff face up. And, and, and we, and I, I think it's, it's a very important one because we wish to elicit the help of really top-notch people. 
in, in the world. In you know, part of the reason that I don't want, I, you know, I, I will bring it up because I feel it's important, yeah, but, I, sure. but I don't like bringing it up. I don't like playing that role. Right. Because the other side is more fun. It's much more fun to talk about the, you know, the, the things that are near the edge and, and, you know, I have my own ideas about Sure, of course things. you do. But, but on the other hand, when everybody's over the edge, Somebody's got to be the cop. Somebody's got to hold the rope. May I say something practical about the type of people you can have? And I've seen many different functions in the JCCSF. You'll get anyone from street people to top professors at Stanford and Berkeley are going to be there. You, you might even have a Nobel Prize winner. Last night I personally invited Jay Levy from UCSF. Uh, so. Uh, you never know who's going to show up. I would predict you'll get a big slice of the Russian Jewish community who's interested in Kabbalah. I think you'll get uh, a big slice of uh, the people who uh, are in the English-speaking group around here and studying Kabbalah, and maybe if there, there are various Kabbalah groups from various tendencies, a few sort of individuals probably will turn up. And then some sort of general, generally educated people maybe with BA, BS degrees. I think that uh, it's, it's not the audience that we should take into consideration because then we'll only uh, be diverted into all kinds of things. There are five respectable people here each in his own field of knowledge. And if we all point out our difficulties in, in advancing in our own fields, and how we look for common ways to advance, that will be interesting for the audience in general. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, everything that you've said so far today, I've really liked. But this I disagree with. Um, I've done a tremendous amount of public speaking. And, uh, and I think, you know, I think I've done a decent job at it. And uh, I, I always take uh, great pains to try to understand the audience in order to to, so that the way that I say what I say is understood by them. He'll, he'll, he'll explain why he said that. He's been lecturing for the past 40 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the problem is that he is really afraid that too many people in the audience will be those who take an interest in Kabbalah. Because they heard that uh, he's coming. But they understand nothing about the possible connections between Kabbalah and the other fields of knowledge. So what might happen is that they might ask questions that have nothing to do w with what we're discussing here. Things that relate only specifically to Kabbalah. So in order to prevent that from happening, uh, he thinks it's, it's a good idea that each speaker will speak for a longer time. And this will be interesting because it's new for everyone. He, he knows many Kabbalists who are just sitting and waiting for the results of this meeting. Philosophers too, with whom he's in contact. People who are anxiously waiting to hear what is coming out of here. What are, what are they looking? What would they ideally hope to have come out? Several things. The first is, um, do scientists in the most advanced of sciences 
feel that progress depends on altering the person himself. That in, in the end, what a person studies is his own self. And so further development depends on a self, on, 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 the ch on an inner change in, in the person himself. אתם אומרים בסרט שסביבנו יש אין סוף אפשרויות. In the film you say that around us there is an infinite number of possibilities. קבלה חושבת שאין סביבנו שום דבר חוץ מאור העליון הנמצא במדינות המוחלטת. קבלה thinks that around us there is nothing but the upper light in a state of complete rest. וכל השינויים ואין סוף אפשרויות אצלנו רק בפנים. And all the changes and the infinite amount of possibilities are all inside us. And we see ourselves uh, like in, on the background or with the upper light in the background. I see it as a uh, I see it as, a, as the next step um, for the world. Newton, Hubert, Einstein, and we, we From Newton through uh, Einstein, Hugh Everett, and so on. Yeah. Realizing that in fact nothing changes except our own inner tools. As, uh, מקובלים ופילוסופים מצפים זה מהמדענים שאולי יגיעו לאותה השקפה. So, Kabbalists and philosophers expect or would hope that scientists will reach the same perspective. If I may add or check something here as a sidebar, I don't fully agree that the only thing we can change is ourselves inside because we are starting to make instruments that allow us to access these higher levels which can ultimately be used as biofeedback devices to build us inside. Tools to help us. It's it's true, but in the end, it's still us. It's still us. Well, I, I mean, we are the instruments. We are the product of the process. That's the goal. No doubt about that. But but we often need training wheels to take the next step. So so the. An answer that might emerge is that maybe with this, with, in this group, that formulation about that the, it's the change of the individual, it's an alchemical formulation, the change of the individual that produced that ultimately is the secret to changing yes. the most subtle of scientific advances. There might be an agreement here, but my guess is that well, not my guess. That is certainly not believed by the vast majority of the top scientists. Unless somebody is willing to declare himself here and now the top scientist in the world, which I'm certainly not willing to do. You know, I don't give a damn about top scientists or the scientific establishment at all. But what they let me finish. He's saying that that's what they want to know. I don't care what they think. All I care about is saying what I have to say, and I will say it the way I have to say it, in whatever way I wish to say it. I don't give a flying damn about what anybody thinks about what I have to say. I stopped caring about that a long time ago. What I care about is changing and transforming this planet that we're on. And I believe you have to introduce new thinking. Even if it's wrong, it doesn't matter. As long as you get people trying to see a new way of thinking. We've got to do that. 
We've got to solve this stupid problem of Jew killing Arab killing Jew. We've got to stop that. There's no way that that's going to go on while I'm on this earth. Now, I want to stop it. And the way I'm going to do it is by speaking adamantly about what I see as the reality of this God-created world. And if it turns out to be scientifically total garbage, I don't get up with my it makes no difference to me because science has little credibility as the only way of seeing the world. It's only one very narrow, very limited way. And the medical model, as you well know, is full of so much bullshit about what's right and what's wrong and what's the right psychological model and what's the right medical model that we're so filled with stuff that people are looking for alternative ways of healing. And you know that. So let's not kowtow to science and is the worshiping God that, that we have to say, oh my God, we better not say anything that you say is wrong. Screw them. They don't know what they have to talk about anyway. We only can make fundamental good change through other people. That's right. And we can only reach them if you do care about what they think. No, I don't agree. That's my opinion. And you can't do it with a message that doesn't have integrity. You have to be telling them what you believe to be the truth. Just part of the problem is rather Yeah, that's what they said to Jesus, too. You have no integrity. But Get out of here! No. You have no integrity. Well, the the issue is it is I think it's a very interesting one because if you look if you look at a growing domain, <laughs> let's say a crystal, and you create a bit of chaos in the environment, then you can perturb the interface so it can make change. If you put in too much chaos, then it, it just destroys the coherence that's there in the first place. So Maybe it needs to be destroyed. So, well, no, I don't want to go that far. It, well, how, but, but how far I, do we have to go? I will happy to on, assign you as the perturbing element. I definitely in, this, in this force. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I think, I think it, it's, it's, all I'm saying is it's beneficial to have some. I agree with this. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. glad. I'm, I'm unhappy, but I do not believe we have to kowtow to anybody right now because know nobody knows the answer. answer. And the, 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 the ways we're going right now are clearly wrong, the, in the, my opinion. And I think you know, in your opinion, yeah. most of it, we're not doing it the right way anymore. So we need some new thinking. And I think that's what has to be happening. So that's why I believe this is an important thing. I believe that we should be reaching out to the Christian church and to the Christian mystics as well and to the Sufis as well. And this is where I think we have to go. We got to bring in this dialogue into the revolution. And if we make mistakes along the way, well, I, I'm, I'm big. I contain multitudes. I'll pull a Walt Whitman on you. I mean, I don't argue with that, and I, I mean, I find it's very interesting looking at the, what the fleet moved, which has a lot of errors of fact, Absolutely. and yet it has reached so many people exactly. at a very deep level. Exactly. It's and it's, full of all kinds And that of experimental data is very things. meaningful, whether we understand it or not. I agree. It's hit people at the right place, and that's why people are responding to it. That's why this thing is going on. It doesn't matter when we say something not quite the way the scientists want us to say it. Bullshit, I don't care. Let's just get it out there. Whatever we do, we can show our you two, go, positions go and integrity. Your, your go with it. Well, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want you to worry about the science because I'm just trying to think you're there. completely off base. Uh, good. Uh, good. Well, I don't think I am, but I'm but glad you will. Well. I'm glad you will. Now that you gave me permission to go with my gun, I just did. I'm glad. I'm glad we disagree. It is a And there's room for the diversity of view. Yes. yes. We're, all, we're, all strong. we're all stronger. <laughs> Diversity is where our strength is. I mean, really. I mean, the Garden of Humanity needs all that diversity. Yes. Anyway, that's just it. When you get a wide variety of uh, personalities with nothing in common except this, what did you say about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you say about this? Well, this is going to stir up some some stuff, and that's what I think it's good. I think yeah. I need some stuff stirred up. I agree. Agree? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. I felt it was a great discussion. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I don't know. It's a problem. I got it. I got it.